Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to head up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebor, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in, of course, when we're doing a Gothenburg beer. Bit of a channel tradition these days. And for this review, we are going to return to a brewery that you've seen me review a good number of beers from before. This must be review number 30 or so that I've done from these guys, if not more. And it's a style of beer that I I'm quite curious about because you don't find all that many of them but I have had one from this brewery before. So for this review then we are going to return to Stiegberget's Brewery and today we're having a taste of the Grandiosa Lager. So this one comes in at 6% ABV and they're describing this one as an Imperial Pale Lager IPL which I guess you could also call an India. Pale Lager. So this beer was released through Sistembolaget here in Sweden as part of the Tilfelid Sortiment, the temporary assortment, on the 21st of October 2020 and uh, hopefully it turns out to be another interesting beer from Stiegberius. They've been doing some really, really nice stuff lately. Um, the last beer that I reviewed from these guys was the Mimosa, which was a lovely kind of orange infused version of uh, Amazing Haze. I really, really like that one, but as you'll know, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, I'm a sucker for these big orangey-leaning IPAs. But the last time I had an IPL from these guys was a way back in March, and it was called uh, A New Dawn, if I remember correctly, and I think it also had a swan on the front of it. So, um, yeah, curious to see how this one turns out. Hopefully it's another good beer, as I said, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. It's always nice to review new beers from Stieg Berriots, and as I've told you before, these guys are one of the best-known Swedish craft breweries these days. So definitely worth checking out if you are interested in Swedish craft beer. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit more about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Steve Berriot's Brewery Group before and there will no doubt be more added to that in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the sweet Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stiegberget's Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've told you before, Stiegberget's Brewery are based in Gothenburg and the company was founded by Niels Hillcrantz and Richard Simonson. So these two guys own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is the Bar Kino and the Hagobion's Cafe, which can be found on Lina Gatan in the city, and they both opened back in 2007. The building in which you'll find these is actually an independent cinema, which has quite a lot of you know, different quirky films that you're not going to see in other places. And if you want a closer look at that, you can check out my Out and About video I did, where um, I went round I spent most of the time in Barkino because it was the quieter of the two, but I go around and show you what this whole building looks like and hopefully the next time I go up to Gothenburg it will be in the daytime, fingers crossed, and uh, I can show you a little bit more of uh, of the, the Hagbeons Cafe as well, but I do recommend that you go and check it out. These days, these two places are kind of the unofficial tap room of both OO Brewing and of Steve Berriot's Bravery in Gothenburg. Um, but originally the idea that these guys had when they were starting the company was that they wanted to kind of brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars. This led to them kegging the beer and selling it on to other pubs and eventually to bottling the beers which began in November of 2014. The original beers that they were making were mainly English and German styles but they really started to make their name when they started brewing the American hoppy styles of beer and the kind of head, the original head brewer for this brewery was Orly Anderson who is very very well respected and he's one of the co-owners of OO Brewing and he stayed with the company until early 2017 if I remember rightly when he went to focus all of his efforts on OO Brewing who are doing very well now these days and uh, he was replaced for a period of time by Barnaby Struve who was one of the vice president presidents at Three Floyds over in Münster, Indiana in America but he has since moved on as well. He was only with them for a very short period of time to kind of talk, uh, to basically tide them over if you like. Um, but they moved to a brewery at Party Halana where they were brewing 5,000 litre batches at a time and they began working on some sour beers there as well. I believe it was about 2018 or so that they moved there if I'm remembering rightly, maybe a little bit earlier. 
Um, but they started selling their beers in 440 milliliter cans during their time there, and this meant that they could export their beers a lot more. You started finding their beers across the continent and uh, I think even further afield than that actually. Um, but they now have a brew team of Ollie Banks who used to work for Beavertown in London and Lucas Munro who was the main man uh, or one of the, the main brewer behind All In Brewing, one of the numerous breweries operating around Gothenburg. Um, but very recently, in the summer of 2020, they moved to a new brewery at Ringen, and they're considering brewing some Lambic beer there as well, which should be interesting. And apparently, there might be the possibility for a bar and swimming facilities at that brewery as well. So that would be really cool to check out once they have it kind of uh, fully open, and if those plans come to fruition, of course. But in April or so of 2020, they opened up a bar in Stockholm, and they've also opened up their own folk oil shop in Gothenburg as well. So for those of you that don't know, in Sweden there is Folko, which is beer below 3.5% and below. Anything that is 3.5% and below can be sold in the supermarkets normally, but anything that's 36 or above has to go through Systembolag at the nationally owned or the state owned um, alcohol stores that we have here in Sweden. But as of October 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, Stieg Beats have produced around 85 different kinds of beers. Mainly they're producing hazy New England beers, uh, New England IPAs and stuff like this, which they are very, very good at, I have to say. Um, particularly recently, they've been producing some very nice stuff, but you will get different things every so often. We've had uh, a barley wine from them recently, a tripel, we've had a night, really nice pilsner. You'll get laggers like this every so often. But yeah, the main style of beer that you'll find from uh, from Steep Beers would be the, the New England hazy style IPAs. But they are good when they try different styles, I have to say as well. I do wish that they would do it a little bit more often, but you know, they are doing it fairly regularly in fairness to them. But yeah, like like I said, one of the best known Swedish craft breweries these days, the beers that I would recommend you try uh, would always be the Amazing Haze, which is one of the kind of cult classic Swedish New England IPAs. Um, the um, new and improved GBG Beer Week is great. If you can get it, Muddle is awesome as well. And uh, recently, probably the best one that I've had from these guys. Uh, the Mistler was great, uh, and you know there's there's been some really really good IPAs from these guys over the over the last uh, the last little while. The King of Hops was really good, and the other one that I wanted to mention has gone right out my head unfortunately. But um, yeah, there's been some really uh, really good beers from these guys over the um, over the last little while. So yeah, keep an eye on what Steve Beers are doing. You're pretty much guaranteed to get a good beer from these guys in my experience. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you for the moment. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that Steve Beers have done. Pardon me. So um, yeah, let's get on and have a taste of this beer then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this before we open it up. You can see the swan there, obviously, you know, grandiosa, kind of a reference to the, you know, swans are always considered very, very graceful. They're actually quite aggressive, you know, from what I've, from uh, experiences I've, I've had with them. They can be quite aggressive, but you just leave them alone, basically. But, um, yeah, 6.5%. Uh, IPL, this one, Imperial Pale Lager, or India Pale Lager, however you want to call it. But, um, yeah, like I said, this is the second one, I think it's the second one that I've had. Um, it's the second one this year, for sure. Maybe I've had a couple from them before like that. But, yeah, the last one was released in March, and that was called A New Dawn, if I remember uh, rightly. But, yeah, 440 milliliter can, this one. This, as I say, was released as part of the Tilfeli Sortiment on the 21st of October 2020. And uh, I think it cost like 30 kroners. I'm sure this beer only cost me like 30 kroners or something like that. So, um, yeah, 6.5% ABV. So without further ado, let's get this out. Uh, and we'll get on with the tasting. Very curious to see what this has in store for us. And I will say the aroma that comes off of this already is really very, very nice. Now, in my experience, the IPL is a really interesting style. You have to be careful with these um, because sometimes they can just be a little bit too boozy. It's quite a, it, it's a difficult style to brew and get right, this one, in my experience, because you have to balance the slightly higher alcohol character with the hops, but still retain that kind of crispness. Some of them can come, can come across as very, very boozy, but um, yeah, they, if they are done right, they can be, it can be a very, very nice style, this one. So um, yeah, basically it's a slightly stronger, more alcoholic and more hopped uh, lager beer essentially the IPL. But um, yeah, this one looks as if looks pretty nice. If we shine the light through this, it's got a lovely kind of amber colour. This one it almost looks a little bit like a West Coast IPA, to be quite honest with you. You can see there's one or two 
big bubble sticking towards the side of the glass there. Maybe there's a few specks of dust on the glass in fairness, but you can see the head's formed very nicely. That's a solid half finger of a frothy. I would say kind of cream coloured head on this one. I wouldn't class that as perfect white. I would say it's a kind of creamy coloured head there. That's going to fade away quite quickly though and just leave a kind of oily layer around the edge of the glass. But uh, yeah, quite an active carbonation visible in this one. It certainly looks very, very nice, but you do want a good bit of carbonation in your lager beers. You do want a bit of that kind of crispness to them. But yeah, it looks kind of like a West Coast IPA in fairness. A lovely rich amber colour there. Uh, and you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass there, there is a degree of clarity to this one, even though the glass is sweating a little bit because of condensation. But yeah, really nice looking beer this. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and see how we got. Nothing overly surprising about the, um, the appearance of this beer. Although you will find some hazy laggers these days just because of how beer trends go. But let's have a look at the aroma of this one then and see how we go. Oh, that does smell very nice actually. I'm curious to know what hop they would put in this. Um, this one strikes me as a little bit old school. It does, when I was brought it out of the can I was thinking, oh, maybe there's a bit of mosaic in that. Because it had quite a bit of an orangey tinge to it. But now I'm wondering if it's a bit of Simcoe that's in this. Um, and Simcoe could be a very interesting one in different beers. As I've told you before, in a New England IP it will give you a more kind of soft, um, kind of creamy passion fruit. If you put it in a more caramelly malt base it's a lot more oily and can give you a few orangey hints as well. If you put it in a black IP it gives you a lot of lovely red fruit. Um, and to me it actually, there is just something that tells me there could be a bit of Simcoe in here. Could be a bit of Simcoe in Mosaic. There is a wee bit of that orangey note coming out of this beer for me. But at the same time you've got a few more of those oily um, soft fruity notes out of this. I like how that beer goes together. The thing I'm noticing about this first is that it has a really kind of wet aroma to it, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, you've got a lovely bit of bready malt coming out of this one. You can definitely smell a bit of that kind of pilsnery, laggery malt coming out of it as well. As I've told you before, pilsner malt is a really, it's a, it's a pain in the ass to kind of to describe actually because it really you just smell the crispness out of it but for me you get a really nice kind of wet slightly wet kind of white bready quality coming out of this one you can smell a few more kind of grainy elements to it like a bit of a kind of bread crusty quality as well um yeah yeah definitely a sort of wet white bready character to this one some bread crusty notes you can also smell a wee bit of a biscuity sweetness like a kind of McVitie's digestive kind of thing um but yeah, the aroma that comes out of this, I think, is um, it's really nice. When you sugar the beer up a little bit more, you start to get a few more kind of brown sugary notes out of this one. But I wouldn't describe the aroma of the malty side of this beer as straight up caramel. It is really more biscuity and sort of McVitie's digestive-like, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the malt base of this one, I don't think there's too much more to report on it than that. But it does come across really nicely and kind of what you'd expect. Quite a bready smelling lager, this one. And in fairness, when it's 6.5% ABV and it is a lager beer, you would expect there to be a little bit more malty presence to it. Remember, the main definition of a lager is that it's a kind of cold fermentation. Um, I've, tried, I've tried to remember the fermentation temperature. I think it's usually about 10 or so degrees a lager ferments at. And it's usually bottom, they call it bottom fermenting yeast. Those are the two main definitions of a lager beer. It's bottom fermenting yeast and it's low temperature fermentation compared to ales. Ales are a higher temperature fermentation, usually about 15 or so, if I remember rightly. But um, yeah, you can definitely smell the sort of crispness and wetness coming out of this beer, for sure. Um, on the hoppy side of things, there's a wee tiny touch of earthiness to it. Um, the green side of the hops for me really leans towards the grassy sort of thing. Um, it's American hops that are in this, I'm pretty sure. They might well have used a German bittering hop in here. Maybe they could have used a little bit of Mandarina Bavaria or something. That would explain some of the orangey characters and the soft earthiness. But for me, it has an almost kind of noble um, quality as well. But there's definitely some American hops in there. And the way that the fruits are coming out and the way that the beer is more grassy, I would think that the main focus with this one has been on late addition hopping rather than early um, addition hopping. But um, yeah. Nice kind of grassy leaning beer in terms of the green side of the hops for me. Um, is there a wee bit of floral character? Um, a little bit, I would say, but it does in some ways it, it does have a little bit of the American aromaticity to it, but that's quite minimal. The main component, if you like, of the uh, the green side of the beer for me is the kind of grassy side of it and just a little touch of earthiness in the background. But yeah, quite typical, I guess, of a lager beer, but sometimes you can get a little bit more hoppy presence out of them. But in terms of the 
fruity side of the beer. The fruit strike me is quite oily in this one. Like I said, there's a little bit of an orangey character to this one. Could be a little bit of Mandarin of Bavaria, but it might be a little bit of um, mosaic. And I think probably a late edition mosaic, because the earthiness and the floral notes out of this are not too strong, to be honest. It comes out, it could well be dry hopped with mosaic, I'm not quite sure. I know that the guys at Steve Beards do love a little bit of mosaic, so it would make sense. Um, if I remember rightly, Amazing Haze is, is mosaic only. Um, so yeah, the aroma that comes out of this is um, is quite lovely actually, I really like that. Um, but yeah, nice juicy oily kind of tangerine oranges out of this one. I think there's a wee touch of like a kind of mango-y, apricot-y type thing. There is a little bit of a softer tropical fruit to this one. I've got a feeling that I could have been wrong about, um, about the, the Simcoe being in this one. I'm not sure. I think I, th I think it could be Mosaic or it could be Mandarin Bavaria. It's one of the orangey leaning hops I think that's in this. Um, but it does smell. There is a wee bit of an apricot -y, kind of man slightly mango -y type note out of this one. It could well be a wee bit of citra that's in there, but if it was citra, I would expect something a little bit more complex. It could, in fairness, be Simcoe. Um, but I don't get the kind of slightly more passion fruity notes that you get out of that, which is interesting. So yeah, I always like playing guess the hops with these beers, but to sum up the fruits, I think there's a wee bit of a, I think there is a wee bit of um, a kind of slightly uh, mangoey note, note to this one, quite a soft mangoey note, and also a good little bit of a, yeah, a bit of a kind of soft mangoey note, a little bit of a kind of apricot quality there, but mainly a slightly more orangey, uh, slightly tangerine oily tangerine kind of note coming out of this one. The aroma of this beer is really quite interesting, I have to say. Nice, juicy, wet and kind of grassy uh, quality for me. So, um, yeah, the aroma gets a thumbs up, but I have to say I'm really curious to try this one. I'm not sure about the hops, like I said, but no doubt one of the Swedish guys from Instagram will be uh, on to, to let me know about that. A little bit later on, they always seem to find some information about Steve Beards that I don't get hold of. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Grandiosa Lager coming in at 6.5% ABV from Steve Beards Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. An IPA, an IPL, sorry, at 6.5% ABV. Slangium, Skull. Oh, that is quite nice, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You do get a little bit of booziness out of this one, I will say that about it. But, um, it does have quite a nice oiliness to it, to sort of round it out. Yeah. Hmm. Quite interesting, I have to say. Definitely quite interesting. Like I said, this is a style you don't come across all that often and you have to be careful with them. Um, this one, I think, I don't, I can't remember if this, if I would, I can't remember the new dawn, if you like to say whether this one is better than that. But I would say I like this. I would say that I like this. That's the main question, of course, when it comes to any beer. Do you like it or not? Yeah, this is quite nice. Yeah, I do like how this um, kind of goes together. I mean, this is the sort of beer that you would give someone who only really drinks IPAs and you want to kind of open their minds a little bit to what a lager can be, actually. Um, is this the best beer I've had from Stieg Berriots? I'm going to say straight away, I wouldn't say so. Um, but, you know, Stieg Berriots have done some cracking beers over the years. That's quite an accolade to... Um, that is quite an accolade to give the best beer that I've had from Steve Berriots. Um, is it the best lager beer that I've had from Steve Berriots? Hmm. That's a different question. I actually think I really like the Pilsner that they did recently. And I have to say, when it comes to lager beers, I am a little bit more of a kind of fan of authenticity, if you like. The IPL is a style, as I say, I think it can be done very, very... If it's done right, it can be very, very nice. But um, it's quite a difficult one to get. And I think in this case, this one is just a little touch, sort of boozy for me, if you like. And it's a good beer, and I do like it, but I would say that I think Stieg Berriots, I think the Pilsner, the, the authentic Pilsner for me, just shades this one a little bit. But I do like it, I have to say. I've that a few times. It does grow on me a little bit more, the more that I drink of it. But yeah, let's try and... 
break down the flavour of this one then and see how we how we go. What you're going to notice about this beer straight away is that it has a really kind of wet mouthfeel, but we'll come to that a little bit later. So um, in the middle of the palate then you can feel that nice kind of wet, white bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your tongue there and that's forming the backbone of the beer. You'll also feel this sweeten up a little bit the further you go into, um, into the aftertaste. So yeah, this one really is quite, um, it really is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, kind of wet, white bready quality there, that blankets the middle of your tongue. When you go towards the back third of your palate, you can feel the breadiness just thickens up a little bit. You can feel a little bit of a kind of Pilsner malt quality sitting there as well. It's almost, if you go to the centre of your palate and just follow a straight line back, you can feel that Pilsner malty crispness coming out of this one. And uh, you can feel that breadiness is there. You do get a little bit more graininess on that back third of the palate as well. And you also get more of a bread crusty quality pushing its way out of this one the further that you go into the aftertaste as well. Um, so you have lots of, quite a bit of complexity to this one. More complexity, I think, in the flavour than there was in the aroma, to be honest. But yeah, as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate, you can feel the thickness the red just kind of goes down a little bit and then on top of the bready note in the middle of your palate you get a little bit of that sweet caramel note. There is definitely a sweet caramel note to this one in the very centre of your palate and it's quite wet at the same time. But then as you move further out from that you start to get a more biscuity kind of grainy quality coming out to the beer like a McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of thing. I think that really covers up, I, I think that really kind of covers the sort of flavour profile of this, of this one that you um, that you get actually, I think that really works out quite um, quite nicely. Um, so yeah, you do get, you do get a little bit of a boozy impression of this one. The further you go into the aftertaste, and some of the bread crusty notes really push their way out on the middle of the palate as well, which is interesting. Yeah, it does sweeten up a bit more the further you go into the aftertaste as well. Like I say, sweet caramel. And as you move further out from the centre, your palate a bit more kind of biscuity and um, a bit more biscuity and McVitie's digestive, like to be honest with you. You do get a little bit of booziness out of that, um, out of the middle of the palate in this one there. I'd be curious to know what malts they've used with this. I think a bit of biscuit malt could be a little bit of carapils, and then maybe a maybe there is a little bit of a straight, um, a little bit of a straight kind of caramel out of this one, if you like. Um, I think that would kind of make sense to be honest with you, but yeah, malt base in this one, yeah, quite it feels quite wet, slightly more oily. I think that's a good way to kind of sum up the the malt base in this one. Other than that, there's not too much to report on the hoppy side of things. Then back corners of the palate, there is a little touch of earthiness there, which again I could uh, I could surmise would be mosaic. I'm not so sure about. But I mean, it could be mosaic and mandarin Bavaria. There is something that feels a little bit more American about this than German to be honest with you so I'm not sure about the Mandarin of Bavaria um, but it does feel that this beer is more focused on late edition hops it's not the most bitter of things but again we'll come to that in the in the mouthfeel but yeah little touch of earthiness there in the back corners of the palate as you move further forward the earthiness does spread forward a little bit you get a wee touch of floral character as you reach the front corners of the tongue then round the very front curve of the palate it's a little bit more light and grassy and again with the flavour it really leans towards that grassy side of things as opposed to the um, as opposed to the um, what's called as opposed to the kind of floral side of it. So yeah quite nice and light and grassy to be honest with you. On the fruity side of things then as I always say front third of your palate that's where the nice oily bubble comes and you get those juicy fruity esters just rolling their way out of the beer. So for me this one again I find this quite orangey to be honest with you. Yeah, I think this one leans towards the, the orangey end of the spectrum. Um, see, I think it is a bit of mosaic in this, but some, there is something about this that's telling me there could be a bit of Amarillo in here as well. Um, the, the kind of more oily nature of the oranges might be like that. Um, it's inter it's, it is interesting that. It is quite interesting. There's something that's telling me this beer might have been sitting for a wee bit as well, but I don't know if it has the candy. But um, it says best before the 7th of the 9th, 2021, so that would maybe tells me it's been 
sitting there since it's maybe been, been in the can since uh, the seventh of uh, yeah the seventh of September twenty twenty. So yeah, you, if I remember rightly, with laggers you do have to let them sit in the bottle uh, or the can a little bit. There's just something that tells me you can you can feel a little bit of the hop just starting to drop in this one, which is interesting. Um, so yeah. Either that or it could just be a little bit more oil and a bit more Amarillo, to be honest. Hmm. Food for thought anyway, but yeah, fruity side of this beer. You go towards the back of that front third of your pack, you will get a wee touch of a kind of almost passion fruity note out of the beer. It's that slightly more pungent passion fruit, but as you move further forward, like I was saying with the aroma, you do get a wee bit of an almost mango-y um, kind of apricot -y note in there, more mango anything else. It could be there could be a wee bit of Simcoe in this one, I do wonder about that. But then as you reach the front part of that front third of your tongue, it's distinctly more oily and sort of tangerine and orangey if you like. So I do think mosaic. Um, it could be a little bit of amarillo but I think the earthiness and the way that the floral notes for me make me want to say mosaic in this one. Um, but as I say, um, the, that I like that juicy kind of oily orange character you get, and as you go further into the aftertaste, more of that tangerine orange comes out, more of that oily character, and then you get a wee bit more oiliness from the fruity end of the beer too, which is quite interesting. So I like that about this one. I do like how all of these different things uh, piece together. So a little bit oily um, from both the malt and the fruity side of this beer. So um, yeah interesting stuff but in terms of the the mouthfeel then I would describe this beer as being at the top end of light bodied um, yeah carbonation is pretty smooth it's one of the more kind of oily lager beers that you're going to come across in a sense but I've certainly had more oily ones than this it still retains a bit of crispness to it the carbonation for me strikes me as being quite crisp and quite active but mouthfeel has a bit of wetness to it and a little bit of oil like I said. In terms of hoppy bitterness, I think this one sits around maybe 25 or 30 IBUs. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, um, but you do get a wee bit of earthiness and lingering out of this one and some floral character coming out of it the further you go into the aftertaste. So there is a wee bit of bitterness there. The malt base for me, again, it feels quite wet and almost quite light, but you've got a good bit of sweetness and a bit of graininess comes out of this one too. And you've got some nice... Um, juicy oily character is uh, you got some nice sort of uh, oily character to the fruitiness in this one as well so yeah quite an oil it's an interesting mouthfeel this one because it does retain that oily maltiness and a bit of oily um, fruity juiciness but at the same time um, it's really got more it's got more of a um, kind of wet lightness to it as well so it's a really curious beer this one in terms of its mouthfeel like I say I've enjoyed this one um, as I was saying earlier, is it one of the, the best and most striking beers that you're going to find from Steve Beer? So I wouldn't really give it that accolade. I actually, again, when it comes to lagers, I would maybe put the Pilsner that they did recently above this one. But is it an interesting beer? Yes. Is it worth trying? Yes. I would say so. I can't remember the the um, new dawn to tell you whether it's better than that, but um, it is an interesting one. And if you um, if you like the style, then I would recommend you have a go with this for sure. So um, yeah, let's leave this review at that then. An interesting one that I do recommend that you try, but just be aware this is probably not the best beer that you're going to find from uh, from Steve Beer. So there's nothing wrong with it, but like I say, there are um, more striking beers out there from uh, from Steve Beer's Brewery. But if you do like a nice kind of orangey leaning Pilsnery type lager, this one, you will enjoy this. This one is a slightly more wet and slightly more boozy uh, Pilsner type beer. Um, if that, if that makes sense. It does have a wee bit of the crispness you expect, but it's got more of a kind of oily character to it, in fairness. So, um, yeah, an interesting one, and I'm glad I was able to review this for you, so I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So let's leave it at that. This one was the Grandiose Lager, coming in at 6.5% ABV, an Imperial Pale Lager, um, or an Imper I guess you could call this an India Pale Lager as well, if you like. But, um, yeah, I thought this was quite nicely done. I enjoyed uh, having this one. I've been going through a bit of a lager phase recently, as I've told you. And uh, this one was another interesting one to try for a slightly different perspective. I guess that more wet, kind of uh, slightly malty character that the beer has is kind of typical of what you would expect from a, a, a so-called kind of pale lager. But, um, yeah, I've enjoyed uh, reviewing this one and I hope that you guys enjoyed my take on it as well. So yeah, let's leave it at that then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Steve Barrett's Brewery. We will return to these guys at some point fairly soon. 
I hope you enjoyed this one. Check out my other Steve Beyer's reviews. Check out my other Swedish reviews as well. Have a go at some of the beers from this brewery if you get the chance. But I'll catch you later. Slam to it, Skull. Thank you for watching. And make sure you check out Steve Beyer's Bravery in Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden. Cheers. <laughs>